You are listening to Do That Well with your host, Karen Thrall, and my dear friend and co-host, Brenda Brown, will not be on this episode today because she's on vacation. Uh, For those of you who are listening for the first time, this is a podcast about real experiences, how to turn them into life lessons. We are no takers, but we are unscripted, and we hold a really high value to honesty and levity and genuineness and passion. These are series of conversations where we explore every aspect of human interaction. We provoke each other to do life well. In this episode, I'd like you to listen in on a conversation that I'm having with Dr. Eric Bean. He's a great friend of mine, and we're talking about the competitive edge. In this conversation that you're about to listen to, we're talking about, we're we're building content for an upcoming webinar. It is a free webinar. You are very welcome to attend it. Please email us at do that well podcast at gmail.com. That's do that well podcast at gmail.com. Or if you have any feedback, please let us know. Um, Eric, a little bit I want to tell you about Eric is Eric is a sports psychologist and he is a high performance and leadership consultant. He works closely with professional athletes, with the military, with Army Special Forces, Navy SEALs. He works closely with surgeons and also corporate executive world. His um, his area of commitment is psychology of high performance, leadership development, culture, and team dynamics. Him and Nicole with their two kids and their two dogs live in Southern California. And it's always great having conversations with my dear friend. And I'm really looking forward to doing this webinar with him in September. So have a listen to us. And thank you again for choosing Do That Well as one of the podcasts that you listen to. We really appreciate it. Please follow us on Instagram at Do That Well. All right. Thank you. Enjoy today's episode. And then I have some questions I want to ask you with my jungle background. Yeah. Okay. Like, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll, okay. let's, let's see what comes up and we'll okay. go from there. So let's start, before I ask you questions, tell me, in, what is your perspective on competitive edge or what has been your experience with it or what have you noticed about yourself or other people and just any, anything you have, any thoughts you have? I think competitive edge is, is uh, I, I, I feel this, the, the same thing that you feel, that people sometimes look at it as negatively uh, as a negative trait when you're overly competitive. And, um, and so one thing that I think is, is kind of misconstrued is the idea of what competition is and what it means to compete. Most people think that that competition is about a winner and a loser. And, and really competition, the, the root word of wow. compete is competier, which means to strive together. Wow. And so the early idea of competition was I need my competitor to bring the best out in me and my competitor needs me to bring the best out in her or him. And so it's striving together. It's rising together and to elevate our levels. We need our competitors in life to elevate our level, levels um, of, of performance, of ability, uh, and to kind of stretch our greatness. So I think the first thing here when it comes to that competitive edge and really thinking about that is how does competition bring, help me elevate my game? How does competition bring the best out in me? Right. Of course, there's going to be some ugly sides and some dark sides, but really without competition, I might not know how great I can be. Without that challenge, without that competitor, I might not have had the ability to, to experience my potential. Wow. So what is it? What, why do like for me personally, what is it in people like me who shun away from it, who shy away from it? What's why do I, we have a, a sour taste for it or, or anything like that? I think the um, part of that is a little bit of societal norms around uh, not making people feel bad and uh, you know, not seeing the pain in, in your competitor's eyes when you, feel great uh, and, and lose. Um, I, I think, you know, I don't have the answer here. So this is sort of just spinning off. But I think one thing that would be interesting is to look at like a collectivist society like Japan, for example, and, and their views on competition. 
and mm -hmm. and how to how to compete in a respectful manner. Um, but anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. So I think people have sometimes a negative view or are shy away from competition because they are really thoughtful and mindful of how other people feel. And so they spend a lot of their days and times helping others, supporting others. And then when they find themselves in a competitive environment, they still are in that mindset of wondering how the other person is feeling, worrying about how they're feeling and trying not to hurt them or make them feel bad. You know, and you're, you're a coach, right? And so for, you know, your first responsibility is do no harm. And yeah. so then you get into a competition. You're like, here I am doing harm to the other person's happiness, enjoyment, <laughs> et cetera. Is that how we see, we see it as harm? I'm harming the person by, uh, by, okay. I, what I like what you said earlier is competition is two people really calling the best out of each other. And I like that. Mm -hmm. And so am I, am, is my mindset that I'm making, the, I'm, this is going to be, this is going to make the person have a really bad day or like. Well, I think because we don't have that belief about competition. We don't okay. have that buy-in that competition is really about striving together. Most people have the belief that competition is me against you, one winner, wow. one loser, wow. and, and losing is bad, winning is good. And, and so there's a lot of like judgment, I think, placed in both of those when the original um, spirit of competition was about striving together, competitor to strive together. And so I think people don't have that recognition or that approach to competition. Okay, so this is exciting because so let me ask you this. If that happened and people started reframing the way they saw competition, what, it, what does happen? Like what is possible? How, what is the advantage that having a healthy view of competition gives you? I think it does a couple things. One is I think it reframes your reactions and your responses to quote losing. And you start to see that as a learning opportunity. You start to examine that from a kind of a growth mindset perspective. What did my competitor do that I didn't do? Where did I go wrong? What can I, what can I do differently next time? In a way that is really um, open and future focused rather than kind of closed and defensive and past focused. I lost, I'm not good enough, all those things that go with that. So I think that's one thing that it can do is kind of open your mind and eyes to um, really learning from a loss and, and learning from that experience. Um, I think another thing is that it, that it can do is um, free you up in a competitive environment, right? If losing isn't so bad, if it's really a learning mm -hmm. opportunity, right? Then when I'm in the competition, I'm okay with that. I'm also okay with winning. And I'm okay, because I, I can be open to the idea that it's my, that my competitor can really learn from this experience and grow from this experience. And that we're learning and growing and striving together, not one against the other. I love this. Okay, and you said that when you said, I'm okay with winning, that went, right. whoa. I don't know if we ask ourselves that. Are you okay with winning? If I say, oh, I'm competing against you, may the best person win. Right. <laughs> Maybe that sounds arrogant. But really, if the true purity of competition is two people calling each other to their absolute greatness. Exactly. Um, you coach athletes. You, you're, well, you're, you're a sports psychologist. Okay, so boom. So you're, you're, you gravitate towards athletes. Your, your investment to the success of athletes, that's your jam. That's, mm -hmm. that's where you thrive and excel. You also, though, however, bring that sports psychology into the military and you bring it into the executive leadership levels. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's three very diverse, different groups of people. What does it, when you, when you really empower this competitive edge, what do you notice about the three groups that are similar or different? Like what are some of the things you've noticed that an athlete, you have to work differently with an athlete than someone in the workplace? Or where do you see it the same? It doesn't matter actually, military, sports, corporate, it's all the same. What, what, are, what do you notice? Where do I see a difference? Um, one thing is when it comes to competition in the, um, uh, athletic realm, 
athletics is a finite game. I don't know if you've read Simon Sinek's book on um, the infinite game, but athletics is a finite game. There is a defined beginning, middle and end. There are agreed upon rules that everybody agrees to. The size of the court is always the same. The size, you know, the height of the hoop is always the same and so on and so forth. And, And it is really clear who quote wins and loses at the end of the quote, at, at the end of the game, because we've all agreed upon the team that has the most points at the end of the game, when the time runs out, wins the game. Um, and so the competitive mindset is, is a little bit different in the sense that I can only, I've got this game to focus on or a season to focus on, right? Whereas in, in military and business, there's not a lot of, there's, there's not all these finite games. So in the book, one of the things he talks about is like, okay, well, how, who's the best writer ever? There's no universally agreed upon criteria to define best writer ever or best business ever. There are metrics that people use to rank and file them, but it's not all agreed upon because some people might say, you know, the one with the most books or the one with the most elaborate stories, or the one with the most detailed um, biographies, and so on and so forth. We can go down this this rabbit hole forever. So when it comes to the competitive mindset in business, I think it's being careful not to apply a finite mindset to really what is an infinite game. And so, so we've got, I think in business, we've got to start to look beyond sort of wins and losses and bring our competitive approach to growth and development and progression and so on and so forth, rather than a finite approach, which is more wins and losses. Mm -hmm. Military is somewhere in between because the military will have kind of defined missions, Mm -hmm. you know, sort of um, battles within the war. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, it's really clear there with like kind of wins and losses. It's not always clear because we know that, but you know, as far as like the military is concerned, like, did we accomplish the mission Mm -hmm. is a, is a win. And did we do so with the least amount of casualties? I was going to say, yeah, the win is in, uh, the safety of people or the protection of people. That's, that's a big win. And that might be ongoing, like that, that's not so cut and dry. It's not so black and white. Exactly. And it might not always be at the top of the list for them. Yeah. You know, for sure. Yeah. But, you know, for the individual, it'd be at the top of the list, but maybe not for the general or the leader. Right. So it gets right. a little bit more, more muddy there and, and, uh, and different. Similar with, with surgeons, right? They've got a really clear objective of what they're trying to do in surgery. And so the mindset necessary to accomplish that objective is really critical along with the execution of their skills. Um, uh, so, but, but we try to kind of, in that case, we're trying to remove a little bit of the competitiveness, how I rank and compare to my fellow surgeons, right? And stay and put the focus more on the patient and the care that we're Your, providing to them. Yeah, the success you have and the, and how they recover, or how the surgery went or like right. your success ratio of, Right. Wow. Okay. But so yeah, go ahead. No, please go. Uh, on. I want to hear. Yeah. I, I, no, I was just going to say like surgeons is a little different, different and difficult because they spend so much of their life being in a competitive environment from mm-hmm. medical school. You know, what was What's your rank in medical school, right? How well did you do on this exam and so on and so forth. And then did you get the best uh, residency? And then were you the best resident and chief resident and so on and so forth. And so they spend so much time of their life in this competitive mindset that when they shift into becoming an attending or, you know, a, a surgeon, it's hard to, to, to separate from that competitive mindset mm-hmm. um, in, a, in a manner that will enable them to find fulfillment and enjoyment in their work and keep the focus on the patient. But that's wow. another thing. No, no, it's good. <laughs> okay, so I have another question for you. You know how um, for people, especially during this last year and a half, people are really rethinking their lives and they're making different choices and they're rethinking their professional life, their personal lives. Like there's a lot of change going on right now over the last year and a half, two years. So for people that want out of their job or for people that want to move 
ahead in their in their career and they apply but nothing happens like they've lost like maybe they want to go to that next level of leadership you know maybe they've been a director now they want to go vp or something what what would you say to to them about that competitive edge so because sometimes they, people get discouraged they're not being chosen what's wrong it must be my resume what what kind of where can competitive edge help them and like what are some of the competitive edge components that could really ignite them to get what they really want i think the, the sometimes the dark side of competitiveness is being too self-focused and self-absorbed and 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 uh, inflexible mm. wow. in that and wow. so so I think one thing that they, I would encourage people to really consider is, um, is in, in that regard is to consider, it's, it's tricky, like what's best for the team, like what's best for the group. And, and in start, instead of thinking in ways of um, what's best for my career, start to think about what's best for the team or the organization or the department that I'm in and and if I can adopt a mentality of you know rising tide lifts all boats right if I can adopt the mentality of if I can elevate the team the department the organization I will lift up alongside it now there is a little balance here because one thing again that that we know with with uh, a lot of people is they're not as comfortable um quote tooting their own horn they're not as comfortable sharing their their involvement and their successes um, and so I think you've got to find a balance of being able to effectively communicate that and illustrate that while also not just being focused on what is it going to take for me to move my career, but what is it going to take for me to support the organization or the team or the group to move forward? Wow. I love what you said about that self-absorbed, uh, self-referenced like, and, and self-absorbed. It's like, whoa, that is a deterrent to the competitive edge. Yeah. An example that I, I think of like sometimes is I'm working with an organization and one thing that they're working on is, um, uh, how do I explain this? So they've got, they've got different, different uh, groups, subsidiaries, if you want to call it that, but they've got different groups and these different groups um, all have their individual financial goals. Well, what ends up happening is that they go after the same contracts within the government. And so they end up competing with each other. And when they compete with each other, right, they, they, they platoon the sort of the whole organization. They put the whole organization at threat. Whereas if they had their kind of defined roles and, and clarity on those roles and didn't compete with each other, but instead said, wow. which group is the best to has the best chance of winning this government contract or this contract and looked at it as a group. So example is like, imagine a soccer team and, and the soccer team is, uh, the individual players on the soccer team are rewarded by, you know, for example, for the forwards, they're re rewarded by how many goals they score, but there are no team wide rewards. There's no team wide re reward if they make the playoffs or anything. Like that. So think about how that's gonna affect their performance in the games. They're going to take low low chance shots. They're going to they're going to you know not pass the ball as much as they should, and so on and so forth. Because the reward is for individual metrics rather than the reward being for team wow. metrics. Right. So if there was like a team reward for making the playoffs or you know winning the championship and so on and so forth, they might be more inclined to pass the ball, look for a high percentage shot, even if it isn't them that's scoring the goal. Etc. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I don't know wow. This is so good. Awful. This is great. No, this is great. Again, we're building content and stuff like that. Okay. So let's move into webinar stuff. Um, uh, yeah. I have uh, listening to you. Here's some ideas I have. There's this thing that I learned uh, when I was, um, it's called outsmarting anger. And I did a whole research on oh, anger wow. and how it was so, so awesome. It was life changing for me. <laughs> So I'm selfish. When I study stuff, it's for my gain, and then I share it. <laughs> um, but what I, one of the things I love, and I want to pass this by, see if you think, is that there's 
three forms of envy that live in our brains. Uh, in our in the neuroscience of our brains, um, but we're only taught one because in religious cultures that one is is bad, and that is you can't envy what someone else has, and that and so we put all our energy on this. You don't envy what someone else has, and so because of that, the other two envies aren't necessarily addressed, and they're important because it, it's our brain. Like this is how our minds process information. So the second one is, I'm not worthy. Wow, look at them. But I, who am I to ever think I could be that? That's another form of envy. Because I'm going, I'm wow, but not me. And the third one is, wow, look at them. There's room up there for me too. Hmm. And I thought, I wondered, would this be part, of, could this be helpful information about our perspective and I don't have to call it envy. I could just say, we could call it something else that just fits more the title. But would that be something that would be useful in co doing the webinars is setting that up about competitive edge is that third component. It's that, wow, look at that. There's room for me up there too. Would that complement your, your? Yeah, teaching? I think so, for sure. I okay. think because, okay. you know, you could go down the growth mindset path with that one growth and fixed mindset. And right, so a fixed mindset is more on looking at somebody else's success and feeling jealousy or envy towards yeah. that success. And um, whereas a growth mindset is looking at somebody else's success and saying, wow, what can I learn from them? You know, what do they do to get there that I can apply to myself and, and, and grow within myself and my own skill yeah. set? I think the other piece there that's interesting too is the worthiness is, you know, this is very difficult and something that I coach a lot of people on, but it's separating the doer from the deed. And mm -hmm. I'm not what I do. Um, I'm, you know, I'm much more than that. And so if I can do that, if I can get that kind of separation, then I can see that uh, my worth does not rise and fall with each success and failure that my worth remains steady regardless of what happens externally. When mm -hmm. I'm able to have that mindset and that framework, I can take a much more um, free approach to learning and development because I'm more comfortable with making mistakes because it's not, it's not affecting my worth. My worth remains unchanged. I'm more comfortable with taking risks and so on and so forth. Wow, this is so good. This is so good. Okay, and then this thing about the healthy com competition and getting us, like centering us on the truth of what the competitive edge truly is and call that for call to action where this is what competitive edge means. If you fall short of this, this belief system or you've overinflated it, like you're either like, that's the other thing, right? Like people see each other as enemies, like cutthroat. I think the idea is if you haven't found the right balance of competitive of a competitive mindset to where it's really serving you, then I think that to me feels like the call to action. Okay. Too okay. much, too little, not enough. Yeah. Yeah, that idea. yeah. Well, that concludes our episode for today. Thank you so much for listening to Eric and I talk about the competitive edge. I do have a question I want to leave with you. And here it is. Do you lean in and embrace your competitive edge? Or do you shy away and avoid it? And it's a question I've been wrestling with and I've been really challenging myself with. And when we reframe our mindset on what that truly means, it is such a key component to your success personally and professionally. And if you're like me and it's something you'd like to grow in more, please join us. We're going to be doing a free webinar with Eric. And just email us, do that well podcast at gmail.com. That's do that well podcast at gmail.com. And we'll send you a registration link. We hope to see you there. And finally, my final thoughts. If you're not following us on Instagram, please go do that. We'd love to have you follow us and be part of our, our bigger community. So thank you again for choosing Do That Well. It's one of your podcasts that you listen to. And we look forward to seeing you here again next week for a new topic. Bye.